Well, good morning, everybody. Obviously, it's uh, not morning for me right now, but I work a little ahead on these videos. Um, I just checked what we were reading. Uh, is it Exodus uh, 17, 18, 19? You know what it is because you looked up what the reading is. Uh, and it'll be in the title. So if I just said that wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm just allowing the passage uh, to wash over me. And we, we can't let this passage go by without noting that Yahweh's desire was intimacy with the people. He was calling them as a, a nation of priests so that they could operate on that level of, of intimacy with him. And uh, that intimacy scared the people. The power of God that is revealed in intimacy really scared them. And basically they turned around and said, nah, that's okay. Moses, you can be intimate on our behalf and we'll, we'll listen to you. So, um, so they backed off. And, and so then the Lord gave them um, the laws, the Ten Commandments, and this was to be the basis of, of the relationship. And then he gave them the case laws, how to apply uh, this law to the situations in their life or situations they, they would come across. And, um, and you can see here that our God is a God of, of, of justice and he seeks equality among his people so that if, uh, and it, it, it's about fairness is what it's about. And it's based on honor that if we are to, uh, if, if we were to honor uh, each other or the Israelites, uh, we're to honor each other. If if they were to do what was right and live in that position of righteousness, and any time you honor somebody, um, it's usually based on a position of righteousness, doing the right thing by them. And, and so, he was really setting them up to be a nation, a prosperous nation, because any nation, any nation, any people uh, have that are laws based upon honor are setting themselves up for prosperity. Because in order for us to be prosperous, we have to consider other people. And when we consider other people, we're not wasting our time uh, worrying about our rights and protecting ourselves because everybody else is doing that for us while we are defending everybody else. And so this is the idea of this, the, the Ten Commandments. When you read them closely, you'll see that it's all about honor, how we honor each other and how we, we honor God. And a lot of them had to do with things that would happen between people, you know, and if mistakes were made or even if it was done on purpose, this is how it's corrected. This is the just way of, of, of dealing with things. And if things happened between us and God, now when I say that, there are behaviors that uh, not only uh, offend other people, but they offend God because he has designed creation to work in a certain way. And when we choose to um, enter into rebellion as his people, we purposely choose to enter into rebellion to use things in, in a way that they're not designed to be used. You know, we understand that uh, there are warranties on, on things, on cars and stuff. But if you use your car to jump the Grand Can uh, Canyon and it's damaged, there's no way the warranty is going to cover that because you're using the vehicle in a way that it wasn't designed. And, and so this is, this is what we're really looking at is God has created things to function in certain ways. And when we, when we don't do that, uh, it's, not, it's not even about that, that thing. And, it can't, and sometimes it's not even about the people. It's about the fact that we are dishonoring our God. So, a just and uh, prosperous nation based on honor are, are the ones that do what is right. According to what God says is right according to him. And we have to remember that we have received an invitation. We have, an, have received an invitation to be part of the kingdom. We don't have to accept that invitation. We, we can live in a place of rebellion. We can live in a place of darkness if we want. That's our choice. But if we do accept the invitation, we don't get to lay down the laws. We don't get to change the, the rules. We don't. We, we live according to Father's heart. His heart uh, has set the rules. His heart has set the patterns. His, his heart 
uh, has based has set the base of the kingdom and and when we're adopted there's a transformation that happens our DNA is changed and and the law actually becomes part of us that's why we don't live an external law because it is written on our heart it is who we are and when we when we operate against that it is um, it is a disloyalty to God uh, it is a, it is a rebellion and uh, it can't stay in the kingdom. And that's those who purposely decide to, to set their heart against him. Those who are part of the kingdom who decide to set their heart against him. And regardless of what he says is right or wrong, they're going to do their own thing. Well, wow. yeah. Let's not go there. Let's not be part of that because that's not who we are. So if you can understand the, the law from that, that perspective... Um, instead of it being a, a burdensome thing. Because Jesus said, if you're tired of that, if you're tired of trying to carry that burden, come to him, because his way is much easier. Uh, his yoke is, is nicely fitting, and uh, he just changes us. He just transforms us so that we're not working against the law, but the law is part of our DNA. So you guys be blessed, encouraged, have a great day, be engaged, and love the Lord with all your heart.